Mrs. Steele, you're rec recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and this is really important issue, and thank you all the witnesses coming out today. You know what, usually I don't eat junk food like this, and I stop eating middle of this because we're talking about nutritious <laughs> food, so thank you. And then, you know, uh, Dr. Frist, um, I was invited to your office when you were a senator, and um, Secretary Chow and a few of us had dinner, and we discussed about this too, so thank you so much for coming out today. Um, currently, 129 million people in the U.S. have at least one major chronic disease, and increasing proportion are dealing with multiple chronic diseases. This creates a personal impact and a substantial effect on our entire healthcare system. We all must look at ways of addressing chronic disease, and I believe part of the problem is lack of access. To prevent chronic disease, I agree this is important that we must work to improve convenient access to high quality and nutritious food that I always eat at home, only come to committee meetings like this that I ended up eating some of junk food. But, and to manage chronic disease, I believe Congress has the ability to put patients and doctors back in charge of health care. Last year, our committee passed the Telehealth Expansion Act, which would ensure access to healthy health services for those with high deductible health plans and health savings account. This will improve access to affordable care and increase patients' choice. Congress must immediately pass this bill before the policy expires by end of this year. I also thank the committee for including the SPEAK Act and our most recent telehealth markup, which will address language barriers in managing chronic diseases. Another way we can manage chronic diseases is through innovative plans, including special needs plans. Today, we have a key witness from my district who has designed a unique plan for seniors who have severe and disabling chronic condition. And Dr. Rinaldo, can you walk me through how SCAN developed the programs for these specific groups of seniors? What kind of requirements from CMS do special needs plans need to comply with in order to target specific diseases? Thank you, Representative Steele. Um, SCAN is proud to offer multiple special needs plans for members with chronic conditions. As I mentioned previously, Three plans that we offer are Balance, Heart First, and Village Health. Balance is our special needs plan for our diabetic members, where they receive no-cost insulin and low-cost drugs, uh, no-cost diabetic supplies, and no-cost diabetic self-management training. We also have Heart First, which offers zero-dollar cardiology visits, as well as low-cost cardiac and pulmonary rehabilitation. And for our members with end-stage renal disease, we offer no-cost nephrology visits, as well as a nurse that works with the patient, their family members, and their providers to basically coordinate their care and ensure they're re receiving the highest value from those services. For all of our chronic condition plans, CMS requires that we create a model of care mm -hmm. that's specifically tailored to that chronic condition, which the agency then approves. Uh, we also train all of our in-network providers on this model of care to ensure they're, they're delivering the highest quality care that is in line with the model. And finally, CMS also requires all, uh, all special needs plans to conduct health risk, risk assessments, which we use as a powerful tool to uncover the social determinants of health that are driving outcomes for our members. So in addition to having chronic diseases, they may also have transportation or food insecurity. And we can address those things by adding wraparound services like free rides and home delivered meals to assist in their clinical trajectory. Thank you. Just yesterday, my bill to expand telehealth access for people with limited English proficiency passed on the House floor. And in your testimony, you mentioned that SCAN's benefit design gives patients 24-7 access to telehealth services. Can you speak further about how Medicare Advantage special needs plan benefits allow SCAN to offer wraparound benefits of patients to improve their overall health, and could you share how your supplementary benefits address cultural 
need of your members, especially for those non-speaking English beneficiaries? Thank you for the question. Um, SCAN really shares your commitment to ensuring that people with uh, limited access and especially limited English profici proficiency have access to services and care whenever they need it. Um, that's why we, along with our partners, have developed benefits and services that include 24-7 care through a telehealth benefit. And we continue to improve and add to these capabilities for our members with English, limited English profici proficiency so that they may obtain care. This includes partnering with um, our telehealth providers, which have clinicians that represent the communities that they serve, including primarily English and Spanish speakers. Um, they also have an uh, interpretation service that they can use to offer over 300 languages to members who call in who don't speak those languages. And then on the health plan side, we have member service advocates who uh, offer uh, assistance to members in languages like Korean, Mandarin, Cantonese, and Vietnamese, and we're continuing to ramp up recruiting for this additional staff uh, going into our open enrollment period. Thank you. Actually, my time is up, so thank you so much for your answer. And then, you know what, if you want to put more information into it, then you can just send to us. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.